Hello, friends. Uh, we continue our Lenten journey to the cross and ultimately to the victory, the, the resurrection of Easter. Uh, appreciate you taking time for Bible study. That's part of Lent, uh, helping us focus on Jesus' suffering, helping us through the Holy Spirit we confess our sins and put our trust in Jesus as our Savior. Uh, Lent is a time to remember our baptism and to pray unto God. And then a time to fast, make our lives a little more simpler as we focus on that, which is truly important. And to a time to, to give and uh, remember the poor and the needy. Uh, we've looked at uh, four of Jesus' uh, words from the cross. First, Father, or, uh, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Second, to the criminal, today you will be with me in paradise. Third, to Mary, Mother, behold your son. And uh, to John, uh, here is your mother. The fourth, the lament, Eloi, Eloi, Laba, Saba, Tani. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And uh, now we come to the fifth, very human, uh, very sad that the giver of life, giving waters, uh, eternal springs of, of water will now cry out, I thirst, uh, sharing in the pain of uh, those who are sent to eternal punishment the parable of the rich man and and Lazarus is he is uh, sent down to to eternal judgment he cries out just ask Lazarus to dip his finger in water and place it on my tongue and now we see Jesus the giver of life giving water cry out in that same agony, I thirst. And it's all because of you and me, because of our sins and for our salvation. Um, let's begin with the prayer. Oh Lord, uh, life can be empty and uh, we thirst and hunger. Uh, we remember those who are truly uh, suffering from uh thirst who do not have uh, good water uh to restore them to replenish them as we think of jesus crying out i thirst we recall how he was pierced and from his side flowed water and blood we recall his baptism when you said this is my beloved child in whom i'm well pleased help us to Remember the poor and the needy, the thirsty, the hungry, and help us uh, also, Lord, to remember our baptism during this Lenten journey. And Jesus, the giver of living waters, amen. I'm going to sing again the song that I had written about the journeying to the cross, which is our Lenten discipline, and I'll share the second uh, verse that has to do with the water and the blood. It's a long, long journey to the cross. It's a long, long journey to the cross. With faith and prayer, God will bring us safely there. It's a long, long journey to the cross. There are blessings, blessings at the cross. There are blessings, blessings at the cross. In the water and the blood, there is mercy, grace, and love. There are blessings, blessings at the cross. So as Jesus gives his all, is emptied for you and for me, he's pouring out. Uh, springs of life-giving water, the, the deserts uh, are renewed and sprout forth with uh, life. And we, the baptized, 
are redeemed and will come to that kingdom where there is a fountain uh, flowing forth that's uh, revealed in in uh, the revelations where we will be able to be uh, uh, blessed without having to pay for it, it says. Uh, I will give to the one who thirsts from the spring of the water of life without cost from revelations. Well, we read again the seven last words of Jesus are recorded in the various gospels. This one, the fifth one, is recorded in, in Mark. And uh, he writes, Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide uh, what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. After this, now this is from John. When Jesus knew that all was finished, he said in order to fulfill the scriptures, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a bunch, a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. It's a lot of prophecy going on, on there. Uh, it was prophesied in Psalm uh, 69. They gave me also gall for my uh, meat. And in my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. Part of the prophecy that the Savior uh, would be famished, would be emptied, would thirst and hunger uh, as he gave his life as a atoning sacrifice for our sin. The significance of the hyssop uh, branch is important. It says they put wine on a bunch, a branch of hyssop and held it at his mouth. That we hear of uh, in Exodus. Uh, God told Moses and the, the Hebrew uh, people, he says, take a branch, bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the, ba is in the basin and touch the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood in the basin. This is about Passover. None of you shall go outside the door of your house until morning, for the Lord will pass through to strike down the Egyptians. When he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over that door and will not allow the destroyer to enter your houses to strike you down. So he took hyssop branches, took the blood of the unblemished land, painted it on their doors, and the uh, angel passed over those doors. But the ones who did not have the blood of the lamb, he entered and killed the firstborn. Here on Golgotha, we see the firstborn, <laughs> the beloved son of Jesus, being crucified. And they take that same branch, the hyssop branch uh, of Exodus, and it signifies that Jesus is the Lamb of God in whose blood we are saved and forgiven, redeemed, or set free as the Israelites were from the slavery of sin, of uh, death, of guilt and shame. Uh, all this fulfilling the prophecy uh, that uh, Jesus was indeed the Messiah. In Psalm 42, we read, As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? Doesn't this sound like Jesus dying? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me, Continually, where is your God? That's what the people said as Jesus died on the cross. Maybe he was remembering this psalm. These things I remember as I pour out my soul like water, like the blood that flowed forth from his side. 
how I went with the throng and led them in, in procession to the house of God. <laughs> Wasn't that Palm Sunday? Why are you cast down on my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. There's hope. It's not a cry of, of uh, mere human abandonment. My soul is cast down within me, therefore I remember you. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Remember Moses, he tapped his staff on the rock and, and water flowed forth for the people. Remember how the Red Sea was parted, water? I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Amen. Why has thou forsaken me? Why must I walk mournfully about because the enemy oppresses me as with a deadly wound in my body, my adversaries taunt me while they say continually to me, where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, the psalm ends, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. Jesus, as he cries out, I thirst, is also saying, I know God will raise me up as he did the Israelites, and overcome uh, the sinfulness, the darkness, uh, powers of evil that would hold us. And uh, there is hope in the Lord, and he will again praise God, uh, as all of creation will on Easter morn. That's the promise. And uh, let's read again how... Uh, in scripture, it tells us that Jesus did humble himself. He shared in our human nature. Our, uh, Jesus himself would say, when you give drink to the thirsty, you give it unto me. Yes. When you feed the hungry, you give it unto me. And when you clothe the naked, you are clothing me. What you do to the least, you do unto me. Uh, in Philippians, St. Paul says, have this attitude in yourself, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, almighty, all powerful, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but instead emptied himself. There we see him emptying himself, uh, knowing thirst, knowing hunger taking the form of a bound servant and being made in the likeness of men. He shares. He's the son of God, but also the son of uh, human uh, men and women. He knows our pain, our suffering, our longing, our yearning, our emptiness. Being found in appearance as a, a human, he him humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross that was considered so shameful uh, so uh, unholy to be killed in such a painful manner as crucifixion but jesus endured that uh, because of us because we uh, were the guilty we were the the lost sheep whom he would become uh, the Lamb of God would take away our sins. Uh, it's ironic that Jesus cries out, I thirst, because he would say earlier in his ministry, everyone who drinks of this water that I will give will be of, of the water of the Samaritan well, says they will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give unto them will never be thirsty again. The water I will give to that person will become of him a spring of water welling up unto eternal life. That's something that he is the the creator of the waters here on earth, the waters above the earth, 
when creation took place, the spirit moved over the waters. Uh, he would flood the earth with water and give the rainbow to Noah and his family, to us as a sign. He would not uh, punish us again. He says he gives water and, and rain to the good and the evil. Uh, he used water throughout his ministry as a sign of the, the kingdom. Uh, he changed water into wine. He cured people, uh, the blind with water. He uh, had a, a paralyzed man placed in the pool of Bethsaida, and he was cured. He cured the deaf with water. Um, water was uh, crucial as a sign of, of the kingdom. Uh, he walked on water. He calmed the storm. Water was such a blessing. And now here, as he dies on our behalf, he's given his all. He says, I thirst. Jesus would say, whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Water. What a blessing. Uh, I'm going to say to you, you know, maybe watch for rainbows. Boy, they still fill you with awe. With all our science, with all our technology, you see a rainbow. And it, it amazes you. And when you see that, remember the water of baptism. That uh, just as Jesus was baptized and three miracles took place, the heavens were parted. And the Holy Spirit came down, and the voice was heard, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. When we are baptized, the heavens are open to us. God's blessings come down upon us, and we, the way into heaven, uh, nothing can stop us. It's open. Uh, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, enters our heart and brings us unto repentance and saving faith. Yes. For the Holy Spirit to fall afresh upon you, to melt you, mold you, uh, fill you, and use you. And then uh, God says of you in baptism, you are my beloved child in whom I'm well pleased. And on Calvary, we see the depth of God's love that Jesus emptied, gave his all, uh, shared in our suffering, took upon himself our punishment. Uh, so, uh, watch for rainbows <laughs> and remember your baptism. Maybe during this Lenten season, find a, a plant that's been neglected and water it and stand in awe as it comes back to life. I must say my wife's good at watering uh, the plants and usually <laughs> she'll kind of adopt some from the family that have been neglected and she, that little bit simple thing of watering brings the miracle of new life. And then, uh, <laughs> make me watch uh, as the snow melts. We're in that time, it's kind of muddy, it's, it's uh, messy, that's Lent. Uh, but know that as the snow melts, it's watering the earth. Spring is on its way. And how about pulling out a photo of a, a, a place that you enjoy going. It probably has to do with water. If it's your lake cottage, maybe a, a place you visited on the, the ocean, on the lake. Uh, but, uh, you know, find those pictures and give thanks for the gift of water uh, in those beautiful places. And then... Uh, Make a list of all the miraculous events that have to do with that simple gift of water, as I, as I did. Think of the Bible, all the miracles of, of water. Uh, Noah's Ark, uh, um, the parting of the Red Sea, and the list goes on. Jesus' ministry, and the one I hope you'll... Remember, especially during Lent, is how when he was pierced 
First, he denied the water. He was, he knew he had to suffer, had to die. He didn't want to numb himself with the wine uh, mixed with the gall. Uh, he would suffer for you and, and for me. And, uh, but think of all the miracles of, of water, even in our everyday lives, how it, it cleanses uh, things that are dirty, it uh, renews, brings life. Water is a power and a force that can destroy, but it also gently comes in the form of rain and snow. Uh, and, uh, and then it leaves its mark on things, you know, for good and bad. But water uh, leaves a mark just like our baptism left the sign of the cross upon us. Well, Jesus, the giver of living waters, uh, emptied himself for you and for me and asks us to share the blessings of salvation uh, by giving simple thing as a cup of water uh, to those who are thirsty, bread to the hungry, visit the sick, uh, take care of the, the needy, those who are in prison, and uh, uh, help clothe those who are cold and, and naked. And we come to the cross sent out to share the blessings as God's redeemed and saved people. I'm going to close with the hymn, uh, The Old Rugged Cross. Not in our hymn book, but I, I still like it. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Let us pray. Lord, we know that had it not been for your grace and mercy, when we pass through this life, we would be suffering in that place of, of uh, gnashing of teeth, of thirst, and punishment. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus took upon himself our punishment, our uh, shame, our guilt, and we are redeemed. And it's in this place of barren and lifeless uh, wilderness of our sin, you have brought the miracle of the spring of life. And in the water that flowed from your side and the blood, we are washed clean and made members of your eternal kingdom. Help us to share the blessings that are ours in Jesus, the Lamb of God. Amen. Well, thank you. We have two more uh, words to look at uh, next week uh, or next uh, session. I don't know if you're doing it every week. What's the fourth or the sixth word is, it is finished. He has completed all that was necessary for our salvation. Thank you, friends. Take care. Bye-bye.